Back in the day, Sora was just a basic character with basic abilities, but with a catch. He is easily abusable in the sense of literally not needing a functioning brain cell. But with the rework, it's harder to find an edge to break. Especially when its mechanics have become more... unique. R.I.P. Old Sword Passive. You will be missed. Now, I'm making this whole text that I printed just to talk about the Sword rework and, and his now inconvenient but convenient abilities to be even more brain dead broken. Now, what very much changed about him? Number one, his passive of gaining shield per hit is removed and replaced with a sword bar able to empower his regular abilities. I'll be elaborating it later. Number two, his forward lunge doesn't grab or stunlock, just dashing. It kind of makes sense be since people do have history of putting everyone back to the void with that ability. Also, his animation is just ramming into someone with his left arm. Number three, his M2 or blade beam has a longer range. Although, I don't think so since that, I'm pretty sure he has infinite rage, right? Oh. It's very noticeable, but in a match where everyone's trying to pummel each other, we don't give a damn. So, I'm going to explain what empowerment does. It's essentially turning the regular abilities, like blade beam and lunge, into special ones. Blade beam boomerangs back to a player, but you need advanced geometry for that to work. Dolphin Jump is a sword swirl com combo. And Lunge is actually the grab stun lock because it looks like you're piercing someone like a kebab. Now, for elaborating reasons, I'm going to explain even more about empowerment because I feel like I should explain more. To fill the bar, you need to hit your enemy. That's literally it. What do you, th what do you think? Fine. Each ability has the same bar filling. I'm going to show the clip. So your best option of filling the bar fast, as expected, is the primary. The rest give off too little, which makes sense. People would have spammed it like if their life depended on it. Now, I've said earlier that we went from inconvenient to convenient. Why? Remember that empowerment cue? Well... Yeah, the devs might have gone overboard with it. People say that the blade beam is better because of the boomerang, but I disagree. Completely. It is the best AoE attack. Better than sword. And you have no idea how it's annoying to deal with the entire enemy team surrounding you. All you have is one-sided AoE attack instead of a full 360. That part is the only thing keeping my boy connected to me. Still asserting dominance and sometimes get MVP from stealing kills, like a rat. Now, for this to be a complete guide, I'm gonna make this video longer because why not? Why not talk constantly like a buffoon? First and foremost, the damage is 13 for primary and 15 for each ability. The ultimate is 25 on direct hit and 75 for explosion radius. It's recommended to have all the enemy lined up for the usage for the usage of the secondary, as it gives a small head start on the damage you're dealing. Do not, under any circumstances, look up. The beam works as a piercing ray and will continue to the direction you point it at. It's fine if you flicked or just mis misdirection it. That's pretty normal. Dolphin jump is either used for navigation vertically, like jumping higher, or deal a little more damage. This same ability can be used to avoid katana, scythe, and slingshot's ult plus Banhammer's spinning ability. Lunge is also a dodge ability, which is recommended for circumstances of a getaway driver, or get closer to your enemy. If you feel confident, go on, kill them. But if you're getting swarmed without a empowered Q, you're screwed, literally, and most likely to die if you have low HP of at least 10 or less. Now, the ultimate is either suicidal or being a complete rat to both your team and enemy. Team as in stealing kills, and enemy as in having to get away from the blast. Yeah, it's really that annoying. I usually would recommend using it on tanks by trying to stick it to their chest 
or in a large cluster of enemy, throw it in the middle. Now remember, it's not called axle arc without having arc as a mechanic. If you're far, try throwing it up, but not too high for it to land straight to the bottom of your area and not too low for it to stick either far or almost at the enemy radius. Time to talk about empowerment usage. In Powered Sword Beam or Sword Boomerang, you need at least somewhat of a geometry to get double hit since it's where you point it at back to you which is going to be difficult. It's recommended by myself to use it when the enemy are lined up perfectly so that the boomerang hitbox can hit the enemy. In Powered Dolphin Jump or Swirl Slash, most recommended ability by myself again, since in a cluster of enemy, you are to immediately have all the enemy together to be to all be hit by the slashes. It's a hard task though, since sometimes you're not target, but you're supports and range teammates. So you're gonna have to lunge and then activate Swirl Slash. Empowerment Lunge Grab Stun Lock. It's like accidentally catching someone, but intentionally. This ability doesn't really come much in handy, but except intercept banhammer skateboard and maybe katana ults since the target wouldn't be in those positions anymore to perform the ult. But it only works for banhammer since his banning works only if he's present. Skateboard and katana are already a too late cause. I feel like this is in it's enough info for my brain. I hope this guy will be useful one day because I'm tired of thinking. If you want to see gameplay, I'll give you gameplay. See you folks in August and have a good time.